Hi folks, I'm Spencer and on today's episode of Court Mania we're talking about a classic horror story. That's the title of the film, not one of those description -y bits that I do. Or is it a description? A classic horror story is a new Italian horror movie that's been put on Netflix, directed by Roberto De Feo and Paolo Strapoli. The plot of the film follows... No, 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 no. The plot of the film follows a group of people who are carpooling their way across Italy. The newest member of the group, and our sort of central character, is Elisa, played by Matilda Lutz, who most people will probably know for being the lead in Revenge. And everyone in the group's sort of got their sort of individual reason for travelling. The guy who's running it is like a film student. There's, you know, a couple. There's an older guy who's a bit more mysterious. It, it, it's that sort of thing. Again, everyone's sort of this sort of stereotype character. And as they're driving along in very classic horror fashion, something appears in the road, swerve off the road and hit a tree. As I said, very classic horror story so far. Burdum tish. But the things get weirder when they wake up and they're not against a tree in the middle of the road. They're in a clearing next to a sort of spooky cabin in the woods. And then there's a super murdery cult in the woods. So it's throwing together a lot of different aspects from different horror cinema and there comes a point where the film sort of plays its hand as to why we've got all these different things happening and I'm not going to go into what that reason is but it's very much a reason it's it's the point in the film that I think is really dividing audiences and I think you either go with it or you just switch it off because you go oh my god that's stupid but I went with it I quite liked the the for lack of a better word twist um I thought it worked really well. I will say right up front, I think if, if you know that it's Italian beforehand and you hear classic horror story, that sets you up very much for something, you know, giallo inflected or where like there's going to be some supernatural stuff to it that in, in like a sort of Barva-esque way, it doesn't go that direction massively. It's much more something that's in debt to um, like Hills Have Eyes or, or even um, there's some imagery that reminds me of the new Wrong Turn. It's got that sort of vibe to it. Also the title makes you think it might be sort of Scream or something like that. It, it's played far more straight than something like Scream. It, it's not pastiche so I think it's worth knowing that that's more what you're getting into. It is a straight horror film basically. Azione. Ciao! Sono Elisa e sono andando dai miei per le vacanze. Di che cosa si ciba il clown di it? Bambini. Paura. Bambini sono solo un mezzo. Pennywise mangia la loro paura. Now, going back to the characters, like I said, they are a bit stereotypical. It does perhaps feel like the film wants them to be stereotypical because it's playing into this whole classic horror story vibe. But despite the fact that you do go, oh, you're that one, you're that one, they are interesting characters. They're very well played and I did find myself caring about them and thinking, oh, I, I hope you don't die, even though I know you are going to die, because film rules tell me that you have to. No, I did, I, I found them interesting. I think, you know, some of the reasons that they've got on to be on the journey are a bit contrived, don't often really make that much difference. It's just a bit of, it's more like character flavour than anything that's really impacting the plot. And, and that it does extend to Elisa as well. Her reason is probably, in fact, the most contrived and doesn't have a fat lot of... It, it, it almost forgets about her reason for being on the trip until, like, from sort of when things start kicking off till the very, very end. It doesn't have much to do. But Matilda Lutz gets a lot of, a lot of work out of the few bits and pieces she's given. She's brilliant in this. I mean, she 
was a very, very strong leading presence in Revenge. She, she is here and she's playing a completely different role. Here she's much more vulnerable, quiet, who, you know, doesn't go from being prey to predator straight away like she does in Revenge, where it's pretty much like she just switches round and becomes badass. Um, you know, it's much more of an evolution here, but she she plays it really well. She's brilliant for, you know, being happy to be thrown around, covered in blood. There's a lot of, there's quite a few scenes where she's crying here and looking horrid with like snot coming out everywhere. She, she really goes for it and I think she's a really good sort of final girl for lack of a better word. She, she has got sort of horror star power. It's a good movie. Mark! Andate in strada e cercate aiuto. Non c'è nessuna strada. The film actually looks very nice. I know people moan quite a lot about Netflix original films not looking amazing or, or just looking like Netflix films. Um, I don't know whether this... I don't know what the circumstances were because this has got a bit more style to it. It has this sort of strange two-tone sort of film stock. You know, like... Um, I don't know what the name of the film type is where it's sort of pink and blue or sort of turquoise it sort of has that vibe going on i mean it will stretch obviously you know they're in a forest and the forest isn't blue it's green and it does stretch to red but it's got this very sort of set color palette and i think it looks visually it looks really quite nice um it, it differentiates itself from especially a lot of horror at the moment it's just very murky and very great it's quite a colorful film not in the way again that you think of classic italian horror you know, there's a bit where there's some bright red light, that's the most sort of out there the lighting gets. But it's it, it the imagery packs some wallop. Um it's shot in I think it's in like two aspect ratio. So it's sort of wide but not ultra wide. It's still got some height to it and it works very nicely because um the the trees still feel sort of tall and imposing like something like the witch um but it still manages to have that scope of making the characters look quite small in this clearing you know next to the house next to all these trees it, it works quite nicely and the cinematography gets quite a lot of atmosphere and you do get the sense that these characters are isolated in the middle of nowhere where you know it might be a case that you could pan the camera and they're not in the middle of nowhere it does manage to... I mean, there are a few points, there are some shots that you go, okay, you've borrowed that from another film, there's a shot on. There's almost a sequence that's sort of lifted out of Midsummer from my memory of a scene in Midsummer. You get what I mean? Um, no, but again, it, it's clearly been made with some passion, there's more thought gone into it. Um, it's not just absolute basic cinematography. It, it, genuinely, I was really surprised how nice it looks. Non siamo i primi. Che cos'è? È la leggenda di Osso Mastrosso a Carcagnosso. La gente moriva di fame e loro promisero di salvarli. The film can be gory. It isn't perhaps as gory as some people have made out. You know, the Netflix description calls it grisly. Um, it isn't. It isn't to that degree, you know. I think if you if you're going into it expecting huge huge amounts of gore and splatter, you might be slightly disappointed. Whether this is a, a it being on Netflix, it's toned down. I don't know. Um, there is there is a very very when it, I mean when it goes for it, it goes for it because I mean there is a very fulci sequence which i mean you know exactly what i mean when i say a very faulty sequence um that works a lot on the tension then perhaps hides the gory payoff i think that's how it works a lot of the time there's a lot of i mean the sound design's really good and there are some wince inducing moments um again sort of generally influenced by other films um there was one moment actually where 
you expect the film to hold back and it actually didn't. It really quite shocked me in a in a good way. Um, you know, um, it didn't like make me want to turn the film. Although I think it might make some people want to turn the film off. Um, it, I mean, it's nothing horrific, but I think if you're a, not a horror fan and you stumble across it, there is a point where something happens that might make you go, "What? They went there? Nah, I don't want to know where they're going after that." Um, but now, I mean, the gore's really well done. What is there? It's got a proper sort of drippy bleh, blood it, it it looks good it's just i could have perhaps done with that little bit push a little bit further i actually really quite like the score for a classic horror story as well composed by massimiliano Macelli. it's this weird hybrid of something like the score for Mandy with its sort of droning synths that aren't afraid to go a bit more 80s with something like the witch because you get these sort of plucked scraping strings thrown in as well and it lends the film a lot of atmosphere because this could very easily have gone very you know full-on synth um, cheesy 80s score and it would have worked fine but again it helps ground the film in a more serious world where there is threat and peril and people feel like y you're watching it because you care about the characters more than just oh, I want some splatter um, yeah it's it really I don't know, it actually makes some of it a bit more unsettling, and especially when it's sort of ramping up towards some of the, the, the deaths. It does pack in some emotion. It, yeah, it was really, it was a nice surprise. Um, and I think, again, it shows that the film has been treated with, we're making a horror film that we want to be scary and investing rather than, oh look, here's a bunch of gory death sequences with plot that doesn't matter. Ma perché adesso non lo dice? Questo è proprio il classico film dell'horror. Overall, I really I was really quite impressed with the classic horror story. I'd mi I'd read some mixed things and was sort of expecting the worst to be disappointed and it, it went beyond my expectations. I think a huge part of that is that it I mean it has a really great central performance. Matilda looks is brilliant. Um and it plays itself Seriously enough, I mean, you know, it's not it's not depressing, it's not harrowing, but it, it de definitely doesn't go for, I think the title makes you think that it's going to be trying to be overly smart, overly funny, you know, ooh, aren't we being edgy because we're pointing out all these things in horror. It, it still manages to be an effective horror film as well as being clever. I think your mileage will vary depending on how much you go with it when it shows it, you know, when it puts its cards on the table and goes, this is what we are. That might, I can really understand that putting people off, but I, I thought it was done very well. I think it could have been done poorly, but I think they, they, they nail it and that it's where the film manages to get, manages to make itself different. It does run into the problem that there are bits where you go, okay, that's a bit of Midsummer, that's a bit of Hills Have Eyes, that's a bit of Fulci. And do you do you go with it? Does it does it manage to get away with the fact that it's basically knocking off a bunch of other more famous films? I think it does just enough to get away with it. Any less, and it might not have. I mean, again, it's not a classic. It isn't a classic horror story. It is in terms of the story, but it's not in terms of the, the pantheon of horror. I don't, I don't think it's going to be massively remembered, but I would quite happily watch it again. I, you know, this is definitely a recommend. It's worth... It's, it's only 90 minutes. It doesn't feel like 90 minutes. It's a good way to spend an evening. And, yeah, I would happily... If someone said, oh, I'd watch... I, I wouldn't mind watching that. I'd be like, yeah... Cool, let's watch that. So yeah, it's worth it's worth your time. But that is just my opinion. What do you think of a classic horror story? 
did you get on board with it or did that bit make you go, nah, this is stupid? Let me know down in the comments. Like and subscribe so you don't miss any more videos and I shall see you next time.